All right, welcome back to part two, talking about Pythagorean theorem. We have three more problems to do. Let's start with number five. The perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 24 centimeters. What is the length of its altitude? Now, if you don't have a picture, then the first thing we want to do is draw one. Equilateral means all three sides congruent. Okay, so I'm going to label these are the same. Now, they say the perimeter is 24. So perimeter is distance around. Perimeter is the distance around. Okay, so perimeter, distance around the figure. Now, we have three sides here. All the sides are the same. And if their total distance is 24, we can divide that by 3. So each side is 8. So 8, 8, Eight. Let's label it. Okay, now the question, what is the length of its altitude? Well, if you want to find altitude, we have to draw one. So let's drop an altitude right here. Now this is an equilateral triangle, just like with an isosceles. If you draw an altitude, you're going to bisect the side. So this becomes 4 and 4. Now notice that we have a right triangle. The altitude, we'll call it x. The hypotenuse is opposite 90, so that's the 8. That's my C, and then here's A and B. So we've got x squared plus 4 squared equals 8 squared. So we go through here, that's 16 and 64 minus 16. So we get x squared equals 48. Now at this point, when you take the square root, this is not going to work out very nicely. When we do square root of 48, we get a decimal. We get 6.93. Now, it's okay to round it. So if you want to say 6.9 or I'll say 6.93, that's a good answer. The problem is, is that that's not exact. This is what we call a rounded solution. If we want the exact answer, we can take square root of 48 and simplify that. We can break it down by using a factor tree. So I'm going to say that's 6 times 8. 6 is 2 times 3. Those are primes, so I'm going to circle them and stop. And then 8 is 2 times 4. And then 4 is 2 times 2. So when I simplify this, that's the square root. I'm going to rewrite it. Now instead of 48, I'm going to write all my prime numbers. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. When you multiply two numbers together that are the same, that's a perfect square. 2 times 2 is 4. I can take the square root of that, which is 2. And then 2 times 2, there's another pair of 2's. That's 4. The square root of that is 2. So when I pull it out, I just write it one time. 2 times 2 is 4. And then square root 3. The 3 is left over on the inside. Now, for square root 3, I can check this on the calculator. 4 square root 3 is the same thing. Okay, so you've got two ways you can write this. Both of these are good. Um, 4 root 3 is more exact. That's the exact solution. 6.93 is rounded. But you can write it either way. All right, let's look at 6. The length of a diagonal of a square is 10 meters. All right, so let's draw a square. Now the diagonal, I'm going to draw one diagonal. They say the length is 10. What is the length of one side of the square? Well, one thing that we know about a square is that we have four right angles. And the other thing that we know is that all the sides are the same. Now when I put this right angle here, notice that we have a right triangle. Now, the thing is, we're missing two sides. I don't want to use different variables uh, because if I try to do A and B, if I say A squared plus B squared equals 10 squared, well, I can't combine those. There's no way I can solve that. But since they're the same, let me just call them X and X. So I could say X squared plus X squared equals 10 squared. 
Now this is a 1x squared plus a 1x squared. So we can add that up. That's 2x squared equals 100. Now before you take the square root, we have to get rid of this 2 in front. That's 2 times x squared. So to undo that, we divide by 2. We get x squared equals 50. Now we can take the square root of both sides. We get x equals... Now the square root of 50 is going to be another decimal, 7.07 or 7.1. But if we break this down, if you uh, simplify the radical, you'll get 5 square root 2. Okay, so we get two possible answers to that, 5 square root 2. And if you need to, if you want to check this, you can go ahead and break it down yourself and do that. All right, so the last one here, number seven, the diagonals of a rhombus. Okay, so now we have a rhombus, have lengths of 18 centimeters and 24 centimeters, respectively. What is the perimeter of the rhombus? Well, let's draw a rhombus. A rhombus is like a square that's slanted. All the sides are the same. Now they tell us the diagonals, and it's both diagonals. The diagonals are 18 and 24. Now the thing is, in a rhombus, we know some things about the diagonals. First of all, they bisect. Because it's a parallelogram, any parallelogram, the diagonals bisect. So if this shorter one is 8, each piece is 9, 18 divided by 2. And if the longer one is 24, half of that would be 12 and 12. Now the other thing about a rhombus that we know is that the diagonals are also perpendicular. So all four angles here at where they cross, these are all 90 degrees. Now I'm just going to draw one of them. And notice that we have a right triangle. And the sides are 9, 12, all we're missing is the hypotenuse, which I'll call x. So we're going to do a squared plus b squared, so 9 and 12 are your legs, equals your hypotenuse is x squared. And so we've got 81 plus 144 equals x squared. Add that up, we get 225. And then we take the square root of 225. Now this works out nicely, we get 15 is equal to x. But the thing is, we're not done. We have to answer the question. The question is, what is the perimeter of the rhombus? Well, if we go back to the picture here, 15 is this side, but in a rhombus, all the sides are equal. So all of these are 15. So the perimeter is basically, you've got 4 times 15, which is 60. And the unit of measurement is centimeters. So our answer is 60 centimeters. And actually, I should go back here to number 6. These were meters. I should put the unit of measurement. And then for number 5, that was also centimeters. And that is the end of the notes.